Hello and welcome back to the France 24 newsroom. You're watching Eye on Africa and I'm Haxi Myers-Belkin. The headlines. Beleaguered South African President Jacob Zuma lives to fight another day after a renewed effort from within the ruling ANC party to oust him is rejected in the name of party unity. We'll be crossing live to Cape Town. Campaigning has officially begun ahead of Kenya's presidential election. Uhuru Kenyatta seeks to renew his mandate as opposition leader Raila Odinga insists only he can be trusted to tackle the rising cost of living in the country. And we meet the Franco-Congolese chef who, after two decades making a name for himself in Europe, returns to the DRC to share his skills with the next generation of Congolese food enthusiasts. Hi again, it's good to have you with us. Let's begin in South Africa, where President Jacob Zuma has survived a renewed effort by some key members of the African National Congress to get him to step down. The ruling party met over the weekend to discuss the possibility of forcing Zuma to resign, but eventually rejected the proposal. This as a number of ANC allies continue to urge the president to leave office, among them the South African Council of Churches and the Congress of South African Trade Unions. The beleaguered president faces mounting criticism over a series of corruption scandals, record unemployment and Zuma's sacking of a respected finance minister. Well, for more on this, we can cross live now to our Cape Town correspondent, Aisha Ismail. Hi, Aisha. Uh, now, the value of the RAND dipped even lower today at the news that Zuma will be sticking around for a while longer. Why did the ANC choose not to support Zuma's ouster? Well, a fragmented ANC will never be able to get rid of President Jacob Zuma. The party has to be absolutely united in order to get rid of him, and he knows this. And there are clearly factions within the party, those for and those against him. And every time the anti-Zuma faction tries to get rid of him and fails, they only strengthen his hand more. Like, for example, on the weekend after a National Executive Committee meeting, which is the highest decision-making body of the ANC, Zuma reportedly warned those against him, saying, continue attacking me in the media and you will see. And some believe that Zuma has dirt on a number of NEC members, hence their support for him and his brazenness. Now, this push to get Zuma to resign has once again exposed, as you just mentioned, enormous rifts within the ruling African National Congress. Where does the party go from here? Well, the African National Congress will have to go and do some serious soul searching. The party needs a total oval and internal cleansing. Um, and on the weekend, the Secretary General um, said that while they were divided on whether Jacob Zuma should step down, there was consensus to ensure unity within the party. But I guess the ANC will have to work very hard to regain the trust of the people before the 2019 elections. Aisha, thank you very much. Aisha Ismail reporting there from South Africa, from Cape Town. Now, authorities in Morocco say they've arrested the fugitive leader of a protest movement that's been behind a period of social unrest in the north of the country. Nasser Zef Zafi, along with a number of other detainees, is now being investigated for undermining the security of the state. Demonstrations erupted in the country's Reef region eight months ago when a fisherman died as he was protesting unfair working conditions. Calls for justice for the man soon became a movement demanding jobs and economic development. Zef Zafi was its leader. His arrest was ordered on Friday when he allegedly interrupted a preacher at a mosque to call for more bouts of civil unrest. Nine more senior officials from the Democratic Republic of Congo will have their assets frozen and their travel restricted after the European Union announced a new wave of sanctioned sanctions linked to the obstruction of the electoral process. The nine public figures include the country's current and former interior ministers, as well as the government spokesperson. President Joseph Kabila's mandate expired last December, but he since refused to step down and hold elections. Dozens of people have since been killed by security forces as they protest Kabila's attempt to cling to power. To Kenya now, where campaigning has officially started ahead of elections in August. 
Voters will be asked to pick local officials, MPs and the president. The current favourites for the top job are the incumbent Uhuru Kenyatta and op opposition leader Raila Odinga, who's vowing to revamp the economy and bring down the cost of living. Nicolas Germain has this report. A massive turnout, a concert, dozens of journalists. The campaign in Kenya kicked off in a lively manner. Opposition leader Raila Odinga is one of the favourites to win the presidential election in August because this time round five of Kenya's main opposition politicians are backing him. Odinga is running for the fourth time. When we take over power, within 90 days, the cost of living will come down. The price of flour, sugar and milk will come down and the cost of rent will come down. His main rival is the incumbent Uhuru Kenyatta, who's also the son of Kenya's first president. Last year, he launched a new movement called the Jubilee Party with Deputy President William Ruto. It is the embodiment of the will of the Kenyan people who are deeply tired of political parties that are nothing more than special purpose vehicles to elect selfish leaders or enclaves designed to protect tribal interests at the expense of the national good. Kenyatta and Ruto were indicted by the International Criminal Court, accused of crimes against humanity for masterminding the violence that followed the 2007 election, but their cases were later dropped. More than a thousand people were killed during the clashes. Kenyatta and Odinga come from bitterly competing political dynasties. The rivalry reflects tribal divisions. The Luos, who support Odinga, often complain that Kenyatta's Kikuyu community has for too long monopolized power. Let's return now to the Democratic Republic of Congo to talk not of sanctions, but of Saka Saka. For those of you who don't know, that's a Congolese national dish. Mick Elise was born in the DRC, but moved to France when he was just 14 years old with one ambition, to become a famous chef. After graduating from one of the world's most prestigious cookery schools, he opened his first restaurant in Toulouse before heading to London. So what happened when Mick returned to his native Congo to share what he'd learnt? Thomas Nicolon reports. Voila. There you go. Try using the whole plate. A little bit more here in the middle. Yes, there you go. Put this here. Great. Beautiful. For Chef Mikel Ize, a plate is like a canvas, and he wants to pass on his love of a well-composed dish to his Congolese colleagues. So what I'm teaching them to do is a twist on Congolese cuisine. We try to show them a new side of African cuisine. All these are local products, saka saka, plantain banana, the chicken we love, tomatoes, prawns. We play on the visual side to make our products look more attractive. With his 20 years of experience in Europe, Mick is convinced he can get Congolese chefs to earn their stripes. There's a huge potential here. First, because we have very good products. Almost everything is organic and high quality. It tastes good, but it also has high nutritional value. So, huge potential. And young people are highly motivated and passionate. In this event center, one day before a huge buffet, Mick's advice is very much appreciated. We're thrilled to have such a good chef like Mick here because it allows us to exchange views with him and enrich our cuisine. It's a job where exchanging ideas is very important. His input is invaluable, especially in areas in which we're a little limited. On the big day, the kitchen is buzzing. This is tasteless. It's no good at all. Add cream. Add some cream and some parmesan. Oblivious to the rush in the kitchen, the clients are enjoying their food. At first glance, it looks good. It seems well prepared. Wonderful. Really good. It's original. I like this kind of initiative. The experience has been so promising for Mick that he intends to create a cooking school in Kinshasa. That's all we have time for right now. Thank you very much for watching and do stay tuned. All the top world news headlines are coming right up.